We're called to raise up a what? Can't hear you. Because nothing is truly yours until you understand it. Yesterday, we were at, we were in Jamaica. If you haven't been to Jamaica, man, you need to go to Jamaica. So we're in Jamaica, and there were some people filming an advertisement commercial. And I'm looking at it. Now, I've been praying in the Holy Spirit. By the way, if you're not praying in the Holy Spirit, you're limiting what God can do through you. Because you're not on God's frequency. You're still walking around with your flesh and still walking around carnal. God's speaking, but you can't hear him because you haven't prepared yourself to hear him. The more you pray in the Spirit and get in the Word, you fine-tune your spirit to hear God. So while I was looking at these guys filming this commercial, I asked the lady who was working with him, I said, what's the guy's name? His name is Mark. Mark is the guy who, it was his uh, bag, leather bag, and a man pouch was, they were filming in the commercial. And that guy had his product in the hotel, Half Moon, nice place to go. I'm putting it out there. They didn't pay me nothing to give you that. So his product is in that, that particular store. And so I just watched him, and I sensed in my spirit, I need to talk to him. But while, while we were in the lobby and I was observing him, I didn't say anything. Then Pastor T, went, Pastor T and I went to eat lunch at a different part of the hotel, I mean, uh, a, a good distance away. As we were sitting in there, guess who comes shooting a commercial? Those guys and the ladies, right? So finally, I said, okay, I got to go talk to him. So I began to prophetically speak to them. I'm telling you all of this because if you won't get in water and get baptized and do what God says, you're not going to do it when he tell you to do something ridiculous. You're going to allow your fear. Well, I won't bother them. Hey, wake up, 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 wake your behind up in here. Wake up. I'm getting ready to close so you can hear this. Wake up. Y'all hear what I say? Look at somebody and say, wake up. I wonder why, why, why we broke. Only servants of God that's broke are those that's not listening. So he told me to go and say something to that guy. I went over and told that guy, I said, I said, your product just here in Jamaica? He said, I said, where you from? He said, I'm from Jamaica. I said, he said, yeah, my product is here in Jamaica. I said, I see you having a huge share, a market uh, share, which means your products will be in the United States. And I began to prophesy over him. I said, the Lord told me to come tell you that. And he said, man, you know, it's interesting. He says, two years ago in Jamaica, I wasn't able to get the proper help and employees to do that kind of work, seamstress. He said, but a lady just out of nowhere said, the Lord told me to tell you to go to Columbia, and there are going to be some people that can do that work. Right. He didn't go to Columbia till two years later. When he went to Columbia two years later, how many of y'all know the manufacturing place was ready to do everything he needed? Wow. At, at I start wondering, why are people so broke? Because they won't listen. He can't get stuff to you because it takes faith. And he'll tell you something through people that you don't like. Why am I looking at you? You won't be able to broke another day in your life. So... I begin to tell this guy this. I say, man, I see you uh, capitalize on the market share. You have a market share, a huge, substantial market share in, a, in, a, in the United States. And I begin to share that with them. And Pastor T was talking. And then where, where is it? And that man who was filming a commercial, he ripped this off himself and gave it to me. I would have never gotten this if I hadn't listened. <laughs> The owner, he took it off and gave it to me. <laughs> Sitting here hearing all these messages, the Lord can't speak through you. You're not hearing him. You won't pray in the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me. He's already helped you. You already saved, already delivered. You don't need another message. You just need to start doing what he tells you to do. And that's why I'm standing here, because I'm no superhero. I'm no special dude. I'm just a dude that even got caught up in sin while pastoring. But he delivered me, and he brought me out, and he put the blood of Jesus on me. So nobody comes in here and ever think that God is through with you, and he can't use you. I'm here on living witness for you. 
getting up here, people preaching all this stuff. The enemy is an enemy. And just because you have a bad play don't mean you lose the game. I'm closing. I'm out. I told you I was going to tell you about Naaman, but I could tell you about Aeneas. This morning, I go where I normally go to worship and spend time praying in the Holy Spirit, but it was raining. Y'all stand up. I'm closing. And when y'all stand up, I just, it's, it's like the crowds in Ram Stadium. It gets me going even more because I play my best when the crowd get going. You heard me? So all of a sudden now, I could I didn't go outside because it was raining. So I went into this area where the TV was. I just glanced at the TV. Next thing you know, Lawrence walks up. I don't know Lawrence. He's 67 years old. And then when I walk in the place, they had signs of spiritual meetings. So I'm just looking. I was kind of like Paul in Athens. When he was looking around, he says, man, y'all are real superstitious. And I saw, okay, spiritual. I didn't see church. I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see nothing. I saw spiritual meetings and rooms that they're going to be in. So one of the guys, and it turned out it was people who dealing with addictions and from all over the country. And they had different speakers coming. So a guy named Lawrence Tears came standing next to me while I'm looking at TV. I've been praying in the Holy Spirit since 440 this morning. This was around, I think, six something. So I'm ready for Lawrence. Lawrence is my dad's name. I'm ready for Lawrence. And Lawrence is 67. He said, man, I just stopped. I got tired of acting like a fool. He said, these drugs and all this kind of stuff, man, ain't no retirement. In that. He's telling me all of this, man. It looked like I just met this man. Now, for all those that get so scared about witnessing the people, Sister Glory had shared, and Apostle Janice has shared something about at one of their rummage uh, room sales at the, uh, uh, somebody came in and got saved and then Gloria watered the, the, the person, watered the seed. Stop being all pressured about witnessing. All you got to do is listen to the Spirit. It, it ain't for you to get people saved. So I just listened to Lawrence. And Lawrence said, yeah, I got four boys. And he said, I just don't want to go back to that stuff. And I started telling him my story. All God needs you to do is tell your story. And I say, you know, Brother Lawrence, I hear you. And I say, this is what I perceive. I say, have you ever run track? He said, yeah, man, I went to Sumner. I ran track. That's right. All right, Sumner in the house. That's right. <laughs> Shout out to Sumner. Sumner in the house. What's the mascot? The bulldog. All right, bulldog. That's right. That's what I need. To, I'm raising up some bulldogs in here. That's right. I'm raising up some bulldogs in here. And so, so I'm talking to him. I said, you ever run a four by run? He said, no, nah, I used to run a four by eight. I said, we all good. But the four by one, I said, I ran the, I ran the starting leg of the four by one. I said, all these good things that this, this group taught you, I said, it's all great. It's like you on the track, but you on, you on like leg three. And I said, I perceive that the Lord now wants to make it personal with you. He's been working in your life through this environment, through this organization. I said, but he's getting ready to, he, you're getting ready to hand your life to him, and he's going to run that anchor leg for you. Yeah. I said, you've been doing a great job up until now. Now it's personal. How come I led Lawrence to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? 67 years old, prayed while all those people were in the room. I know Alcohol Anonymous. I know they say that's what I used to be, and I hear people always saying, I'm a recovering. Any man, we read it this earlier, if any person, man or female, male or female, be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. That includes your addictions. That include all the things that you've been dealing with. They passed away. And how many things have become new? I can't hear you. The only way that becomes real in your life, you got to say it. I am a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creature. I'm no longer my past because your boy is going to try to bring up your past. Some of your family members might bring it up. But you need to tell them, why are you still talking about somebody that's dead? Did y'all hear what I said? So as we baptize, as we baptize, as we baptize, they're going in the water. 
which is symbolic. Burial. Talking about spirit now. And what I told Mr. Lawrence, I said, Mr. Lawrence, your nature got to change. No matter what you change on the outside until the nature change. And that's what born again experience does. It changes what? Your nature. When my nature changed my junior year in college, I knew I was saved. When I was going to church growing up, no, no, no change in my nature. I, I said what, I'll share with you guys all the time. As long as Lawrence and Lillian didn't know about it, I was doing it. Why? Because I had the fear of man. But when I gave my life to Jesus Christ at Greater St. Stephen's Baptist Church, Bishop Paul Martin gave an invitation. I gave my life to Jesus Christ as Lawrence did this morning. My nature changed. When your nature changes like a horse. How many of y'all know back in the days, some of my old heads know they used to break horses by riding on them and stay on them until the horse just got his wheel broken. Well, when that horse cut, got what was called broken, nothing physically changed in the horse. But something changed on the inside. That's how you know you're saved. You're here today and you have no conviction for your sin. You got a bad batch of salvation. And we're getting ready to give you a good batch. Amen. Give your life to the Lord where your nature changed. Come on. I got a question. If you would be seated. I got a question as I close out. Is there anybody in here you know you're not saved? I'm carrying this bag. It's a nice bag. Isn't that a nice bag? You know what I'd do if I was listening to this message? I'd do everything God tell me to do. Because I want my bag. Do you know if we teach the youngsters to obey God, they chasing the bag. The bag are chasing them. I, I know people think this this crazy. It's not. If I hadn't lived it, I wouldn't be talking it. I just told you, didn't do it all perfectly. I didn't have a perfect game. But perfect games don't put you in the Hall of Fame. It's when you have a bad one, but you don't allow the next one to be bad. Because you have selective amnesia. Some of y'all remember all the wrong stuff. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are God's kid. I don't care what you're dealing with right now. I don't care what mess. I don't care if you're in a crack house. If you're born again, you're his kid. And he's going to send angels. He's going to send help. We're going to be praying for you. And they're going to get you out. I don't care if you're in a White House. He's coming. Why? He don't see big eyes and little use. For God so love. For God so. For God so. Hold up a second. I don't know if y'all think we think enough about what we've been delivered from. Because you can sit in these, these seats and forget it. And forget what it was like. And what other people deal with. But when you bring to remembrance what God has done for you. You're not rushing from the Lawrence's. And about a week ago it was DeAndre sitting outside uh, West County Mall. I'll never forget. And Paul, that's one of his secrets to success. He never forgot. And he even made a statement. He says, among sinners, I'm chief. But God showed me his mercy so nobody ever can think that they too far or have done too much for God to redeem them. Amen. This your day. I thought about some of you all get saved today. We get you in the water today. If we can just go, we'll send somebody to get you some shorts and stuff. No, I'm serious. Jesus got baptized. Why? Because the Father said get baptized. Many of you all will get filled with the Holy Spirit. 
You heard me praying in other tongues, and I, I interpret some of, it, some of it, but it was really just to give you an example. I'd be on the sideline praying in the Holy Spirit. But those unknown tongues is just not praying. It's the Holy Spirit becoming your architect. It's the Holy Spirit changing and rearranging furniture and things like on the inside of you. Isn't it interesting? It turned out that 67-year-old Lawrence was a truck driver. And as I typically do, Jeremiah, I ask people, what's unique about your business that most people would be interested to know? He said, patience. I say, patience? He said, yeah, patience. He said, guys, get out there and put people's lives in jeopardy because they're rushing. He said, if you late, it'd be hard for you to catch up, so you might as well call in and tell them you're running behind. He also said that uh, if, you're, if you're patient, if you're patient, if you're patient, you have less accidents. He said, if you decide to speed and they pull you over, you're still going to be late. So why not be patient? God created patience. And it's the foolproof, Tracy, it's the foolproof plan of God in his kingdom to keep you from lacking nothing. Pastor, how do you know that? He says, let patience, James 1, let patience have her perfect work that you will be thoroughly complete lacking nothing. You know, as a cornerback, I had to be patient. Because if I was patient, the receiver would tell me what he was going to do. Some of us are not patient. You got to call on your life. Don't you go making it happen. Submit somewhere and be patient. He also said when you're patient, you have peace. Because you're not looking for the cop to pull you over. When you trust in God, you have patience. And he gives you peace. You don't have to make it happen. He's already made it happen. That's the thing I found out. It's already done. I'm in a Pro Football Hall of Fame. Do you know when I was in my freshman and sophomore year, it was already in God's book that I was going to be in the Hall of Fame? All I had to do is follow the steps. When he put on my heart to walk on, I had to just go walk on. I had to submit to a coach who was real mean. Because sometimes your tutelage and your mentors may not be the people you like. And he want to grow you up. You don't get to choose your mentors. He does. And sometimes they're going to have personalities you don't like. Because when you mentor in somebody, they're not going to like yours. So get over it. Can somebody say get over it? Get over it. I speak there's a get over it anointing in here. Get over yourself. Yes. 